With silence comes peace. With peace comes freedom. With freedom comes silence. In the past few weeks, liberals slash leftists have basically gone berserk over the situation at the border. Across the country, outrage is building. Protesters taking to the streets horrified that immigration officials are ripping families apart. Which ironically is the result of their own lawless policies. For liberal policies on immigration provide an incentive for people to come to the U.S. in an illegal, irresponsible, or dangerous fashion. The liberals have really become unhinged on this particular issue, even beyond their usual execrable behavior. If you vote for Trump, then you, the voter, you, not Donald Trump, are standing at the bar border like Nazis going, you here, you here. And I think we now have to flip it. And it's a given the evilness of Donald Trump. But if you vote, you can no longer separate yourself. You can't say, well, he's OK, but. Their activity is demonic, but it's also interesting that even though the border situation existed prior to this month, the liberals' particularly fierce and appalling outburst of unspeakable hypocrisy and lies on this matter has come in June, which is Sodomite Abomination Month, also known as, quote, Gay Pride Month. We believe that there is a connection. In the New Testament, hamartia, that is sin, and anamia, that is lawlessness, are sometimes used synonymously. That's because, as 1 John 3, 4 says, quote, everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness, end quote. With businesses and people all over America openly celebrating sodomite abominations in June, the demons are particularly active and aggressive in the United States at this very time. Sins against nature are being celebrated in a special manner this month. It's interesting. I don't know if you've uh, looked around during the month of June recently, but... Every international corporation you can think of, every bank, every airline, every consumer product, every retail store is hosed down in rainbow flags. They've all changed their uh, avatars on social media to rainbow colors. I took an Uber the other morning, and the little line that shows me where my driver was going, the route, it turned into a rainbow path. They are, they are the, the status quo. The LGBT rights movement is the establishment. It is the man. It makes sense, therefore, that at the very time when spiritual lawlessness is being most notoriously celebrated in the U.S., a major controversy about law and order has erupted in the country, with the very same liberals who defend or champion notorious sins against nature going basically nuts in defense of lawlessness at the U.S. border. NBC reports that 15 Democratic congressional candidates are calling for the defunding or dismantling of immigration customs enforcement. Back to my point, we don't want any borders, right? That's no borders at all. We don't believe it's just a coincidence. The liberals who love or celebrate abominable and unnatural sins are essentially denouncing as evil anyone in the U.S. who advocates for a reasonable and necessary application of basic immigration laws, which protect innocent people and ensure law and order. And if you're an illegal immigrant, no matter how many times you've been deported, there may be no safer place than Portland, Oregon. The city plus Multnomah County and even the state legislature, all run by Democrats, have passed laws declaring themselves a sanctuary for people in the country illegally. 31-year-old Sergio Martinez is now being held without bail on charges of robbery, kidnapping, and sexual abuse. One of his alleged victims is a 65-year-old woman who was brutally attacked at knife point in her home. The other woman was a attacked in a parking garage at her apartment. Martinez reportedly told P Portland police he was high on meth at the time and uses drugs every day. Immigration and Customs Enforcement says he has been removed from the U.S. 13 times since 2008. He has a lengthy criminal record in three states, including battery, felony burglary, and felony illegal re-entry after removal. In December, Martinez was in Multnomah County Jail, and ICE asked the Sheriff's Department to let them know before he was released. 
They ignored that request, as they do for all immigration detainers. The chairman of the Oregon Republican Party was on Fox and Friends this morning. He was given preferential treatment. Essentially in Oregon, our governor and the mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler, have created a protected class for illegal aliens that commit serious uh, as for Sergio Martinez, get this, taxpayers may actually pay for his defense. The Portland City Council earlier this year awarded $50,000 to launch a project aimed at helping immigrants fight deportation and other legal issues. John? Unbelievable. That's the word for it. Of course, we are not against immigrants or people from other nations just because they are from other nations. But without reasonable border laws, a country descends into chaos. Last year, ICE deported 796 members of MS-13. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, MS-13 is the gang that hacks kids to death. We believe that the liberals' aggressive defense of lawlessness is connected to their aggressive support for sin. Make no mistake about it, the liberals and the left-wing media who essentially want no border enforcement are hypocrites of the worst kind. They don't really care about children. Indeed, they support murdering children in the womb through abortion. They also push their liberal agenda with lies. So, folks, here is the cover seen around the world now debunked. The father of the little girl that was featured on this week's Time magazine cover telling the Daily Mail that she was never separated from her mother. It's a very different narrative implied by the picture featured on the cover or what the editors wanted you to perceive. Uh, Howie, this this is propaganda, pure and simple. It's it's not factual-based journalism. The... the the narrative that is meant by this cover is this is a little girl who's one of the separated from the parents, and she, it's just not so. But there's so many false narratives. It goes right back to where this, this thing all started about a month ago uh, when we had information, photos put out by Democratic operatives uh, showing detention centers. Here's one of them. But, of course, this took place during the Obama era, not during the Trump. The implication was this is what happens with the Trump uh, no tolerance policy, and, and in fact, it was something from the Obama era. They don't really care about the countless crimes committed by many of the people who enter the country in an unlawful fashion. At least, they don't care enough to support effective measures that would stop those crimes or cut down on the number of them. In fact, the statistics on the number of crimes committed by illegal aliens are staggering. In any case, we now for the first time have the actual numbers, and here they are. According to statistics from the U.S. Sentencing Commission, non-citizens are actually far more likely to commit serious crimes than Americans are. Non-citizens account for 22 percent, more than a fifth, of all federal murder convictions, 18 percent of fraud convictions, 33 percent of money laundering convictions, 29 percent of drug trafficking convictions, and 72 percent of convictions for drug possession. Meanwhile, the non-citizen percentage of the American population about 7%. So that is a massively disproportionate amount of crime, not even close. No, immigrants are not more law-abiding and less dangerous than Americans. That's totally untrue. Indeed, it's the opposite of the truth. Non-citizens are more likely to be arrested, convicted, and imprisoned for serious crimes than people who were born here, much more likely. So why didn't we know this until now? Why have so many people been lying to us about this for so long? The liberals almost certainly would not allow illegal aliens into their own locked and walled homes. No, they are lawless people who hate God and the U.S. They are rebels against God who love sin. Since they are spiritually lawless rebels steeped in sin and under Satan's power, they hate and condemn even the most basic and reasonable laws that are meant to restrain evil, ensure domestic order and stability, and stop crime. They are abominations. Treasure Coast man is behind bars accused of threatening to kill Congressman Brian Mast's children in response to the current immigration policy. Mast has three young children. Well, Jay Lawrence Key is his name. He's now facing federal charges. He's accused of calling Mast's D.C. office and speaking to an intern there and allegedly telling that intern that he would kill Mast's children in response to children being removed from their families at the border. Stewart resident Lawrence Key was arrested Monday shortly after the FBI was notified about the possible threat. According to court records obtained by our news partners at TC Palm, Key told an intern who answered his call, quote, I'm going to find the congressman's kids and kill them. 
If you're going to separate kids at the border, I'm going to kill his kids. Don't try to find me because you won't. We spoke to a friend of Keyes who says he volunteers regularly for the Democratic Party of Martin County to sign people up to vote and has volunteered many hours for Planned Parenthood. Those documents also show that Key has called Mast's office more than 470 times. Investigators also say he called the offices of Senators Bill Nelson and Marco Rubio on Monday. Furthermore, people need to understand that what we're seeing from the left right now and since Trump took office are the effects of a public exorcism. That's right. We are seeing the effects of a public exorcism. Well, the embrace of violence on the left didn't start yesterday. It's been clearly visible ever since Trump started running for president close to two years ago. His campaign rallies, his inauguration, almost every police policy action, rather, he's made as president have all been treated as a chance to begin a violent act. Burning cars and smashed windows, dressed in black, their faces covered, armed with hammers and bricks. Facing off with thousands of officers on site, many in riot gear, confronting them with flashbang grenades and pepper spray. Before the swearing in ceremony even began, protesters tried to block checkpoint entrances. During President Trump's speech, several demonstrators were escorted out of the area. Several officers injured during the protest today and more than a hundred people arrested. When Donald Trump took the oath of office, the people here sang, we shall overcome. Resist from day one! Similar demonstrations across the country. Arrest outside Trump Tower, New York City. A human chain across San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. From Phoenix to Houston to Chicago, people protesting the country's new president on his first day in office. Barack Obama was and is one of the most wicked and despicable human beings to have ever lived. Perhaps thousands of devils were in him and accompanied him wherever he was. Obama's fraudulent administration was characterized by outrageous lies, the promotion of sodomy, abortion, and all kinds of evil, both here and abroad. It was a reign of evil. Here's a guarantee that I've made. If you have insurance that you like, then you will be able to keep that insurance. If you've got a doctor that you like, you will be able to keep your doctor. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. It's a very simple declarative statement that was said over and over again, but now in fact, for about 15 million Americans who have individual health insurance, that's not true. CBS News confirms more than 2 million Americans have been told they cannot renew their current health insurance policies. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan. Period. If you like your insurance plan, you will keep it. No one will be able to take that away from you. It hasn't happened yet. It won't happen in the future. <laughs> Drum roll, please. The lie of the year for 2013 goes to none other than President Barack Obama. I just want to say thank you for everything you do on behalf of America's women. Throughout Planned Parenthood's history, you've helped women and their families make their own choices about health and family planning. Stories tonight, many celebrities have turned to Twitter to share their feelings over Barack Obama's support of same-sex ma marriage. It also needs to be understood that the person in the White House not only has a major impact on what goes on in the government, but also on the culture in general. That's because, among other reasons, he's almost always in the news, and what he promotes and does greatly influences what is considered acceptable or mainstream public opinion, not only in America but in various other countries. Hence Obama, besides his Supreme Court, quote, nominations, was a major factor in why gay, quote, marriage and the, quote, LGBT agenda are now considered mainstream and why the culture has rapidly transformed and fallen into a spiritual abyss. Eight years ago, it would have been hard to believe that we could repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, pass the Hate Crimes Act, and legalize marriage equality all with one president. 
But yes, we could, and yes, we did. President Obama, we are all so grateful for everything you've done in the name of equality, kindness, and love. We're gonna spread happiness. We're gonna spread freedom. Obama's gonna change it. Obama's gonna lead them. We're gonna change it and rearrange it. We're gonna change the world. It's also interesting that when the spoken words of Obama's famous campaign slogan, quote, Yes, we can, are reversed, they audibly come out to, quote, Thank you, Satan, end quote. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. Thank you, Satan. You say. Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with uh, Leviticus? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child? if he strays from the faith, or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? A passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. For the fourth time, a challenge to the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, has once again reached the U.S. Supreme Court. 37 plaintiffs, including the Little Sisters of the Poor, have joined together to fight the HHS mandate which requires most employers to provide a wide array of contraceptives to their employees cost-free, including those critics believe can trigger an abortion. When Obama and his administration of leftist abominations left the White House and were replaced by a much more conservative Trump administration, which, even though it has problems, is more pro-life and much better in many ways, Many devils were displaced and removed during the transfer. Now, we are not saying that we agree with everything Trump does, we don't, or that some devils don't remain in the White House, they do. However, many devils, probably multitudes, were displaced from the White House and associated agencies of power with the departure of Obama's administration and the entrance of Trump's more conservative administration. That's why wicked and demonic liberals, or more precisely, the devils in them, reacted to Trump's inauguration like this. Yes. to be able to introduce for the first time ever anywhere the 45th president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. In our view, that was a real example of an outburst from a devil who is furious that many devils have been displaced from the White House and associated agencies with Obama's departure. Overnight, protesters taking their battle cry for transgender rights directly to the White House. Shame on Trump! Protect the trans students! Accusing the Trump administration of delivering a major blow. Trans equality now! In a late night decision, the White House reversed guidelines issued under President Obama. Public schools no longer required to allow transgender students to use the bathroom of their choice. This is also why many abominable celebrities and various pro athletes who loved Obama passionately hate Trump. You bum at Stephen Curry 30 already said he ain't going, therefore, ain't no invite. Going to White House was a great honor until you showed up. Oh! The devils in them are upset that many devils from the Obama administration are no longer in the White House and in associated agencies. In fact, on the one-year anniversary of Trump's election, various liberals gathered together to do this. (laughs) 
Jesus told us that, quote, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first, end quote. The many devils who left the White House and associated government agencies with the departure of Obama and his cronies desperately want back in. His motives and his actions are contemptible, and I will fight every day until he is impeached. Impeach 45. Impeach 45. And page 45. Impeach Donald Trump. That was the message in downtown Los Angeles Sunday by thousands of protesters who want Congress to remove the Republican president from office. This perfectly explains why the left has lost its collective mind in regard to Trump and in reaction to almost everything he does. The vitriol being unleashed against Sarah Huckabee Sanders is stunning and sad. The White House press secretary and her family were kicked out of a Virginia restaurant called the Red Hen yesterday for moral reasons, because she works for President Trump. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? <laughs> Robert De Niro fantasizing about punching the president in the face and telling him to F off every other day. It's an actor dressed to look just like President Donald Trump as he's assassinated on stage. Look as his character is stabbed to death. And there's no mistaking the Trump connection. Check out the unbuttoned overcoat and red tie that hangs over his waist. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. Some very disturbing new information to report tonight on Wednesday's assassination attempt on GOP lawmakers. Fox News can confirm that authorities found a list of six names of Republican members of Congress in a van belonging to James Hodgkinson, the left-wing gunman who opened fire at practice for the annual congressional baseball game. The news adds to the mountain of evidence that Hodgkinson specifically targeted Republicans when he went on his shooting spree, wounding five, including House Majority Whip Steve Scalise, who remains hospitalized and in critical condition. And I want to tell you, for these members of his cabinet who remain and try to defend him, they're not going to be able to go to a restaurant. They're not going to be able to stop at a gas station. They're not going to be able to shop at a department store. The people are going to turn on them. They're going to protest. They're going to uh, absolutely harass them. Naturally, those associated with President Trump, they're now being targeted by America's viciously angry left wing all over the country. They're doing it to women and children. Now, listen to what happened to Florida Attorney General. She'll join us in just a few minutes, Pam Bondi, this weekend as she goes to see the Mr. Rogers movie. Take a look. Three huge guys came up and started probably an inch from my face, screaming at me every word in the book, cursing as loud as they could. Uh, so then a trooper, my trooper came up and my boyfriend and I got our tickets, we're headed in, and then they ran in and circled me where I could not get in the theater. They stopped me. Um, so he came up then and stopped them. So then we went in the theater, thought it was diffused, we're up getting popcorn at the concession stand, and they came up again, just every curse word in the book. Those liberals who rail against Trump support abortion, homosexuality, lies, socialism, etc. They have devils in them. The devils in them were comfortable with the abomination Barack Obama, but now they are gnashing their teeth. They want back in. Hence, they have become more and more unhinged, saying in essence, I will return to my house from which I came. Anywhere the 45th President of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. 